Alright, what's up guys and welcome back to my channel. It has been a very very long time and as some of you know, I recently just got married and I was overseas for my honeymoon trip and very excited to be back. Notice the background change as well. For the long awaited video will be another series on Skylock's Reborn tier list and for this time we'll be going on to the Lost Souls. As you can see, there's not as much cards uh, for the Lost Souls or all the mixed faction decks. And later on, I will also be looking through some of the new cards that has gone out and I haven't seen them in action yet. So without further ado, let's get straight into this video. Similar to the previous cards, I'll rate it as for, for the S tier, it's a must have for your deck right until F. For the F tier, it is completely useless. And this is all in the context of uh, the tier list for PvE, uh, Lost Souls for PvE. And without further ado, of course, let's get straight into this video. Alright, and for the first card, we have the Ethereal Storm. Red Affinity. Mm, however, there's only the Red Affinity here because to me, I don't think the Ethereal Storm, both Affinities are very useful. Or uh, rather, I wouldn't even use these two cards in my loss so that because the zero storm only buffs uh, revenant and re and revenants are units that are not permanent so they will die out after about 30 seconds or so so yes to me i don't think it's very good so i put it at the f tier is zero storm so next we have the loss Bainstone, uh, the green affinity, however, I would just assume both affinities as a similar use because uh, usually these uh, lost Bainstones are used to freeze the enemy units so that the enemy units they won't spawn out of the camp because you can't, uh, technically they haven't really died so the next wave won't spawn. Of course this doesn't work for all maps but for some maps you have to kill off the enemy units in order for the next uh, wave to spawn. Yeah, so there is some sort of use but very 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 situational that's why i put it as the d tier next time we've got the lost converter and that comes in two affinities yeah so basically the difference between the purple and the blue is that for the purple affinity the enemy unit must stay within the radius of the lost converter for five seconds and they will be frozen for 25 seconds However, for the blue affinity, any enemy that steps into the zone will immediately be frozen for a duration of 15 seconds. It sounds like a good card and there's some sort of use but I've honestly never used this card before. So I will place, I will place both of these cards at a D tier. Alright, next time we got the Lost Dancer, the Fire and the Purple affinity. However, I'll obviously rate the Fire affinity a lot higher because of its Siege and they are Pretty good card. I'll put the 550 Lost Dancer as around like a B tier. And for the purple one, not very useful. Uh, the difference is that the purple affinity Lost Dancer uh, deals more damage to human units. Not as useful, very specific, so I'll put it as a D tier. And next up, we've got the Lost Disruptor, and they are reasonably very cheap. So not too bad and they have the ability the Tainted Disruption for the purple and the Gifted Disruption for the green affinity which affects the entire map. Of course for this ability the only useful one would be the purple one which uh, when you use this ability any hostile units uh, the whole entire map will be dealt 15% more damage but not very useful because you have to use 60 power for it so lost disruptor i'll put it as a d tier all right next up we have the lost dragon the green affinity first for the green affinity is the gifted speed enemies within the area will be contaminated and they are not able to use their range or special abilities for five seconds for the purple the tainted speed enemies within the affected area will deal 50% less damage for 5 seconds so overall I would consider both quite equal and they are honestly pretty pretty useful and I will put Lost Dragon as an A tier very very useful for both affinities next up we got the Lost Evocation and as I mentioned I'm not, very, not, not, not a fan of the 
revenant summoning for lost evocation you basically summon a revenant to fight for you but uh, the, this revenant buffs your lost souls so for the blue affinity lost evocation your lost souls around the summoned revenant will take 50 percent less damage but for the fire one you buff your lost souls and they'll do 50 percent more damage i think it can be useful in a way because the lost soul army 50 percent more damage is pretty pretty good so i will rate the lost evocation for fire affinity slightly higher um, I'm not exactly sure if it can reach the A tier, probably around a B or a C tier. Thinking for a mixed deck like a Lost Soul, even placing this card, there's, there's other cards into consideration as for example the Frost card or the Shadow cards. So honestly I'll put the Lost Evocation a little lower C tier. So I'll just split it up, the Fire Affinity a C and the Frost Affinity a D tier. Next up we got the Lost Grigory and basically uh, the difference between these are the abilities, the Fire Affinity one, uh, when you use it, it taunts a nearby unit to attack your Lost Grigory and your Lost Grigory is able to do 50% more damage. For the Purple Affinity one, it's the same effect of the taunt but enemy units will deal 30% less damage to your Lost Grigory. So, it's either like a defense or attack and I'll put both as a C tier. Next up we got the Lost Horror and the difference between uh, these two cards is that the Fire Infinity knocks back uh, small and medium units but only speeds 2 GUI speed but the Nature Infinity speeds 3 GUI speeds and doesn't knock back any units. So if you think about it, uh, I would rate the Nature Infinity higher because Technically, if you have more enemy units nearby, the damage per second is much higher. So, obviously, Lost Horror is always my top pick in Lost Soul decks, which is why I'll put it as an S tier. And for the Fire Affinity situational, if you want to have a combination, it's pretty good. Um, so that you prevent enemy units from attacking your Lost Horrors. Uh, put it as a nice, nice B tier. Next up, we got the Lost Launcher. And Needless to say, these two cards are very drastically different in tiers. I would put the blue affinity loss launcher as a, at an F tier because why would you even play that when you have this awesome red affinity loss launcher which um, deals an insane amount of damage and also attacks air units. It's a must have for defense tower for your lost souls card. Next you got Lost Priest and honestly I think these both both of these cards are pretty trashy. I'll put it as an F tier. I have never seen anyone use it. Uh, for Lost Rivers, I honestly don't really use the ability for PvE as well. Um, so I would still rate both of them quite fairly similar. Um, they are not bad cards, pretty pretty decent tank for tier 2. I'll put it as a B tier, you can have it. Oh, I can don't have it, but when you have it, it's a pretty good tank. Uh, deals decent amount of damage. Okay, for Lost Shade, it's also a drastically different tier list for the affinities. The blue affinity is way, way better for the Lost Shade because in larger groups, they are dealt lesser damage. Um, basically, the blue affinity allows them to receive 15% less damage as long as they have at least two other lost shades around yeah, but for the purple affinity lost shade it basically reflects damage back to the enemy units but only if they are dealt melee damage so obviously uh, lost shades the blue affinity is much versatile which is why it's almost like a must have if you play lost souls and for the purple affinity not very useful it's a D tier Next up, everyone's favorite Lost Spirit Sheet. For this, I do have to mention they are S tier, deals an insane amount of damage, very versatile, and very, very, very good damage dealer. Next, you have the Lost Vigil, and usually I'll use these very specific maps to defend uh, against uh, the Twilight Dancer, extremely long range, as long as uh, the Lost Vigil is within a friendly building. So I'll put it as the D tier. Next up, we got the Lost Wanderer, and for this, debatable, I use it as a beginner, and of course, as a new player, it's very helpful because it 
has this passive ability to grant your units ice shield so it's not entirely useless and honestly i read both of the lost wanderers at, at a b or c tier put it as a c tier next we got lost wall and honestly i haven't been playing this card for uh, a long time i haven't had much experience with it so for the lost wall ability is to teleport a hostile unit and for the frost affinity one you gain ice shield the fire affinity one you get a 50 percent damage buff so obviously the 50 percent damage buff is much useful uh, because of its nature of the ability where you want to sing out a hostile unit and quickly kill it before the rest arrives so it's i put it as a b tier um, just because i feel like there's better cards to play for other frost cards or shadow cards and of course the frost affinity will be much lower at d tier now next up we have the protector seal and obviously this is a pvp card it's a f tier immediately and last we got the revenant's blessing and i've also never seen this card being played before um, it's a two orb card requiring 90 power for upgrade zero creates an aura that extends the lifetime of lost souls revenant yes i think it's highly that it highly likely that it's not very useful at all f tier never seen it being played i have never played it as well so yes this is my tier list for the lost souls and of course let's take a look at some new cards right we have a couple of new cards that's really interesting the sanctuary the raven walker as well what i love is this raven walker uh, accompanied by the raven heart it's a uh, construct on steroids you have to watch you walk Let's see this it's very insane uh, my favorite card that is new is the raven arch walker because it's really, really insane and look at the corrupt sh corrupting shot the corrupting shot is pretty cool it has a raven flying over very very well designed and very pleased with the new cards all right and this is it for my video and i will look forward to seeing you guys soon not forgetting that i have a live stream planned hopefully within the coming weeks i have been quite busy settling down as well so yeah so i really appreciate your patience and waiting for more content to come out and of course uh, i have other games that i have some content to roll out and and yes i'll see you guys again real soon